Hi everyone, it's Karen Williams here, the Book Mentor, and today I am delighted to be interviewing Helen Battersby and Anne Stenbaum from Global Business Leaders. Now they're both executive coaches and they run a leadership consultancy and they help organisations to uncover the extraordinary potential of their people. Now I've known Helen for many years and I was delighted when she and Anne came to me and said, we're ready to write our book. And um, this is the book, um, The Discovery Prism, which I do have a copy here. And um, I'm delighted that you're here with me today. Welcome, ladies, and thank you for joining me. Thank, thank you. you Pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So let me start with the first question is really tell us a bit about your book and what inspired you to go ahead and write it. Um, well, I'll probably take the first part of that, Anne. Um, our book is called, as you just kindly said, Karen, The Discovery Prism. Um, and The Discovery Prism is a, a tool for 21st century leaders who want to make um, a difference. It's a simple and insightful framework, which mm -hmm. are words that other people use, to help you ask the big questions of your organisation, its purpose, its place in the world, and its legacy for future generations. Um, uh, simply, it's about which dots to connect for 21st century organisations of whatever size to thrive in this complex, fast-paced environment. And I'm especially proud about all the subjects in it because um, um, the Times has just had its um, CEO's 2019 conference. Mm -hmm. um, and it said that um, trying to balance the need for profit with renewed sense of purpose was a big theme of the day from FTSE 100 bosses opining on rebuilding trust and tech entrepreneurs showing how artificial intelligence can help to check the sustainability of supply chains about human sustainability, environmental sustainability and purpose and legacy for future generations. Wow, brilliant, thank you. And what would you like to add to that, if anything? <laughs> it was a good start. <laughs> um, so, so the discovery prism is a term that we came up in writing actually after, after we started we had various names for it beforehand and 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 we had this framework and we've we've been using it and talking about it for a number of years mm. um, and the discovery prism is it's three lenses that that overlap that create overlapping lenses and that answer the questions that every single organization is already asking or should be asking uh, in order in order to have to build a thriving organization so answering the questions basically um, about vision uh, where are they heading for answering questions about purpose what what are we here for who are we here for how are we living the values uh, who are we doing our work for I'm mm -hmm. taking in a very wide stakeholder community um, and the overlapping len lenses are the legacy um, strategy and the promises we make to each other and um, internally and externally that um, other people would probably talk about culture and brand. So it's, it's very wide and encompassing, but we hope that it presents a way that uh, just makes sense of all of those questions so that people can say, yeah, well, we're doing this and we're doing that. But actually, we haven't really thought about it in such a, in broad terms before and through answering the questions in a collaborative way in an organization we can address a lot of gaps and and hopefully create space for the right conversations to happen in organizations mm -hmm. and that's what we're hoping for but it takes organizations on a journey doesn't it it's not just focusing on one part of it like values or or the culture it takes people through the whole journey and that's what i love about the book is it it really opens up so much potential for these organizations to actually to move forward and as you say thrive because it's a fast-paced life now um you know i was talking to a friend i was with a friend of mine on friday night who works for a well-known um uk national company and she was saying how the culture's changed she's being made redundant and she was telling me how the culture's changed and she's been there for 25 years and she's ready to move on because things aren't the same as when she joined mm. things have changed so much yeah and that's yeah, a well so. well-known well-established um company yeah it's very it's very much about change i think we all t talk about change and, it, and it's easy to talk about these things and it's a lot harder to do mm. um and and as coaches of course we we ask a lot of questions so so the framework is about asking questions um mm. and letting people provide their answers in an organization and including as many people as possible in the participative process um, yeah. So what inspired you to write it now though because obviously you could have written it any time what was kind of the I know when you came to me it was probably about 18 months ago wasn't it that we started on the process but why what, what was the thing that kind of went we need to write it? it we were, we were talking I, I was thinking about this because we had the, the initial inspiration from the framework but as you say that was 
we did that a couple of weeks before we wrote the book. And, and the thing is, when we showed the framework to um, leaders of organisations, head of HR, it always sparked a realisation or an insight. Um, and, you know, people said, you know, we want, we want to know more about this. That, and, um, and so we thought, why are we keeping this to ourselves? At the same time, we, we wanted to really show what we were about mm -hmm. um, and what underpinned us as um, coaches in the leadership space and working with organisations and what, what set us apart. Um, and so I suppose that you'd call that the credibility, but also the transparency of knowing what we were about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think when we talked about it, Anne, we hardly, it's kind of something we held each other to account. I, I think we said, yes, we'll write a book about it. And we weren't quite sure that we were going to do it, but we told each other. So, so then, then it, it, it the yeah, and then Helen asked Karen. So that meant, oh, well, you're suddenly look, committed to doing, doing it, weren't you? We're doing something here. So, oh, yes. <laughs> that was a commitment. So it was. It was part of that commitment. It was it, the beginning was in speaking to you uh, and you know, deciding, well, let's do this. And, you know, and engaging you made the difference in like, taking that first step. Brilliant. So it's been a journey. What would you say have been your biggest challenges on that journey? Challenges? What challenges? <laughs> Brilliant. No challenges. That's what I like to hear. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say that, like, first of all, I, I, and I think this would be a challenge for everybody, is, is life, life getting in the way. Yeah. Um, as we were writing, um, we were we were going un, uh, undergoing a big house renovation, uh, which meant my office at home was in a very very noisy environment. Um, I know you, 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 you sadly Anne had you know your parents you had your dad had health health issues and you were dealing with the sad loss of your father um, while we were writing mm -hmm. as well. So I think I think everybody probably um can connect with that that that, that, yeah. that there are things in life that are happening um while you're trying to write the book um in addition to that i think we were talking about our that every day doesn't flow as well as another day and there are days where you have self-doubt about oh you know is anybody going to want to read this is this worthwhile um and um it, but those those challenges i'm, I'm and people might think there were challenges because there were two of us, but in fact, for us, and I think that reflects our, our working partnership, um, for me, at least speaking for myself, that's always a, a second grace um, that um, I've, got, I've got Anne um, and that we work in partnership. And, and I think that is, we always produce so much more and at such a, a, a greater depth than we would individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, you know, we had a lot of robust discussion um, that, that really brought us along with the whole concept. So what the Discovery Prism was when we started is certainly not uh, where it is now and you know, much, much advanced, I think. Uh, we both believe in that. Uh, and you know, sometimes you might think, oh, the challenge is the fact that we're not co-located, but we never have been. So, so working virtually was not the issue. Um, it was it was about finding the right space and time sometimes and, and saying now isn't the right time and now is and, and focusing on that so finding the focus as Helen said mm -hmm. I think the self self doubt comes um, and um, dealing with the fact that actually yes I, I can write and and it does make sense not just to me but it makes sense to Helen is mm -hmm. something that that was really helpful um, in the process. Um, Okay. So looking back, it doesn't feel like that they were so huge, really. Are we ever coming? Like <laughs> we, we forgot the pain. We forgot the pain, <laughs> like childbirth. Yeah. Well, I, know, I know one of the things you did from time to time, especially towards the end, is you got together. Because I know um, Anne, you're based in London and Stockholm, and Helen, you're based on the south coast of the UK. So actually getting together and finding that time to write was invaluable. But how did you find it working, the two of you writing the book? Because obviously there's more than one voice, and that's the thing that... I think yeah. a lot of people struggle with when they're, when they're writing a book together is how to either separate or merge those two voices. I think, I think we, were, we were aware of it and, and wanted to make sure that, um, that it at least sounds as if it, it didn't matter if there were two voices coming through, but, but they, shouldn't, they shouldn't clash, I think. 
Yeah. Uh, and Helen and I have quite different <laughs> writing styles, speaking styles and writing styles, of which we are both very aware. And, you know, we have to laugh at each other for that. And um, so, so I, th I think getting on and doing your writing, but then what we always did was we swapped chapters and re-edited. Mm -hmm. So we, we divided up the chapters between each other and, and swapped them. And so I edited Helen, she edited mine and, um, and then, you know, an, another version then of course evolved from that. And I think that's made it a lot stronger. Um, so it combines our voices and that, and now when I, when I read through, there are parts where I actually, I know which chapters I wrote, but I think they both represent our voices really well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said um, earlier that um, and the, the the book evolved. So the discovery prison when you started is not the discovery prison at the end. What what happened on that journey that made it evolve? The the conversations that we had, quite simply, mm -hmm. um, the the conversations about, about each different chapter that we're working on individually and and in the overlaps and and through the writing we we then became clearer what we were writing about so it wasn't just about vision we didn't want this book to be just about strategy or just about values because there are plenty of books out there we really wanted it to be about the connections uh, and so coming back to you know the connections was really important mm -hmm. uh, and and i think also what was really helpful um that we we discussed this uh, helen and i earlier that you asked a lot of pertinent questions in the beginning of our journey you know who's the book for what's it about and um what, you know what's different about the book what's unique and of course that's a scary question because you think oh, <gasps> you know what is unique and different mm -hmm. um but so answering questions in the beginning but also revisiting revisiting those answers and saying is is this what it's still about where is it where is it now how 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 far have we come along this journey and oh oh actually it's taking a bit of a different format even the name emerged as we were as we were writing together we had a different one when we started out so um yeah um through through the revision of key questions i think yeah. that's that's really made a huge difference I think I find with many clients is that, you know, the message evolves, it becomes stronger. They, people tend to, you know, I know you went through, a, you know, a, a website update and you know, new photos and all sorts of things like that as, as, as you probably maybe grew into your message as well and grew into the, what you wanted to say. I, I, I think it's one of the gifts of writing the book. And I would imagine that that's transferred across any book that anybody writes is that you, you're, you think you're coming to the book with your to, to to get your voice and to get your idea out there which of course you are mm. but the book is also part in a way of the process of you becoming of you because you're putting so much energy into to the book and focus mm. it's it, it it also um lifts up your ideas it makes you clarify them it makes you add to them it makes you see other layers underneath the, the ideas that you'd already uncovered. As Anne already said, it gave us the metaphor of the prism, which for me has actually brought the ideas together as a good metaphor does. It's not just um, uh, a convenient picture. It, it, it actually has meaning to it. And, and, and that's, that's the gift. And it, essentially that's a message of the prism. When you have the important conversations, when you focus on the right things, the gifts that you get are manifold and not things that you could have predicted at the outset. Mm. So the same with the book, writing it. So it's, it's giving you many things you didn't expect. You get. It's all of the unexpected benefits of writing a book, I like to call them. Exactly. Yeah. And the underlying, prison, um, the underlying principles that we have, which are about collaboration and dialogue and being more than doing. Um, they they evolved in a in a much clearer way as we were writing, and that's that's become part of the content. Mm -hmm. So you went on, you published through us as well. So you published through Libertas Books. So we helped you through the process. Was that useful to have us guiding you every step of the way? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it wouldn't have happened otherwise. Um, and, and I mean, and of course, that that is something that that just gives a lot of. Oh, a sense of comfort, of security, of knowing that, you know, ooh, when we don't know quite what's happening here, uh, we just need to wait for Karen's call and then... And, and of course, there's that really irritating accountability sheet that comes in every Monday morning. <laughs> 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 that makes you think, oh, what did I do on the book this week? But apart from that, having, you know, having the members of the team and knowing that when we get to the point at which 
we need professional editing and where the you know the copy um, has to be set and where we need the image creation and the design and, and all the publishing bits and bobs that we didn't even want to start thinking about that's when it is just you know it's just invaluable I think really to be able to say oh good it's you know we'll pass it over to you now just tell us what to do next well, there are uh, so many moving cogs aren't there so many parts to it yes, and obviously more exactly than you would like, ever imagine I know <laughs> <laughs> It's not just a handing over. That's what's I think that's what's lovely about Libertas, the, the, the group. It's it's a co-creation, but co-creation with a professional that knows what the boundaries are, what what you have to consider that you may not have considered. Um, so so it, it's really a co-creative process. And, you know, we're all working in this professional sphere. We we want a product at the end of the day that is looks professional, that sounds professional. And all the elements that we put into that um, ensure that we have a professional product at the end. And, and that was so good because I don't know how anybody writes a book on their own because you don't see your own um, failings, shortcomings. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, Anne and I, we were so grateful for Louise not being in our space because she picked up on words that we use all the time mm. that other people um, would think, well, what, what are you talking about? And so that, that forced us to be um, clearer. Um, it, it, it forced us to really think about what those things meant all over again, rather than other people just nodding and saying, we know what you mean. So it, it, it really forces the professionalization. And I, I, I like to add as well that um, after Louise, the editor, had read it a few times because she felt she was getting too close to the text, she even brought somebody else in um to, to to ensure that we still had um somebody picking up those last little little um and 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 that's where i think we felt not only in professional safe hands but in 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 hands who cared about about yeah. us mm -hmm. and, and our work and and i think that's what everybody asks for it, when they're in partnership uh, yeah. professionally or otherwise that's mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Well, you get word blind, don't you? And I think Louise is oh, getting yes. word blind. So we have brought in another proofreader now. So we have an editor and a proofreader, which is great. And I think that's one of the things that evolved within Libertas last year is that we realised that you can, you can, you, you, you see what you think you're going to see, not necessarily what is down on paper. And I find that all the time with my own writing as well. Mm. So you, we had your, when was your book launch party? I know it was a few months ago now. It, it doesn't feel like long ago, but it's probably long ago than I thought, mid-March. Mm. So what's happened since you launched your book, since we all met up and had that amazing party? What's, what's happened since? What have been your successes? I, th I think we've, we've had some, um, well, a, lot, a lot of acknowledgement from, from the community, from our, from our book launch, which is wonderful. Um, and, and as a result, and even before then, I think we've engaged in conversations that we wouldn't have had beforehand. Um, through writing the book and asking for references, uh, that's given us the yeah um in it's given us some new contacts with people that we possibly wouldn't have had before because we've said look, look this is what we're writing about could you possibly please um, give us permission to use this and 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 a conversation has has resulted which is which is really encouraging um and apart from that we've had some um some leads through for some work from somebody in um who has actually read the book and seen that the um the messages really resonate and has passed us on and referred us to some other large organizations that we weren't that we weren't talking to before so it's been very very encouraging mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um and and I I, I I was saying to Anne earlier when i was having lunch with some girlfriends um one of my girlfriends was banging the table saying they're just not managing in accordance with the, the prism and that's why everything is going wrong and i thought wow i, I was i was really amazed I, I you know i must say that i don't bring up those subjects uh, when i'm having lunch with the girls but somebody else did and i thought oh that's real success as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. yeah i remember the first time someone quoted my own work with my first book i remember doing a talk in london and someone was quoting back my my book to me and she later became a client it was actually great to actually hear my words reflected back and what i was saying and how it had actually touched her life and obviously made a difference to her yeah it's lovely yeah. when that happens it is it is so what would you say the biggest impact's been so far? Is it the leads or is it something else? Um, 
I think I think because because the book is part of a is a bigger process and um, so writing the book is one thing and then of course it's so who do you write it for and what are you going to do with it most people don't want to write one book to put on their own shelf at home but they you know they want to get it out there and that's given us um, the impetus to think about so how how are we perceived um, with you know with our clients with a greater community so and, and you mentioned the new website so we said oh, actually we need a new website actually it's not just about the website it's about our messaging our communication and our branding so that that has brought us to a completely different space in how we put ourselves out in the world really and and how we hope to attract clients and and work and serve the clients that we have already uh, yeah for me i think that's the, the biggest impact yeah. helen anything you want to add yeah, I, I think there's the, um, I, I can reread it now without <laughs> it being too close to me. I'm just, I'm just really proud that we, we put together what we put together because it so reflects what we want to say. Um, and so there's, the big success is thinking, this is something we wanted to say and we've said it and uh, we've, got a, we've got a book about it. Um, I, I the the current success with a, with a couple of referrals and people that are interested that's fantastic we know that there's a a longer way to go if you like to get the message out there um to to if if you like so when people say oh so how's the sales of the book going um to say oh really well i at the moment that's not how we're measuring success because we know a lot more has to be input before that becomes a measure but there's there's so much more i think that that proud that pride um the fact that other people that are, that have read it find that it resonates the the fact that external i'm seeing references made in the press uh, in the economist in the ft in um in in the national press to the principles that we've been talking about um i i think that gives us a lot to 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 a, a big platform from which to step up from mm. and it, i think with any as you know with any marketing you know it takes longevity it takes time it takes focus yeah. it's not an instant and i think you know it's not an instant success when you put your book and you go i've got my book actually that's just the start of the journey isn't it as you're finding you know you, you think the writing bit is hard and then you go oh now i need to get it out to more people but when you've got a book it enables you to get into the organizations you want to get into and things like that exactly yeah exactly. so Ladies, what advice would you give to anyone who's either started the journey or is thinking about writing a book? I, I think um, have the confidence, um, dare. I think everybody has uh, a unique voice and shouldn't be uh, afraid of sharing that. Um, that I think that's, that's something that certainly comes through writing. Um, so, so definitely that. And, and also knowing that this is only part of a longer journey, that the writing is perhaps the smaller part <laughs> of a journey that will then take you who knows where afterwards uh, so to see that as, as a as a step in in a longer process mm -hmm. and Helen what I would also say is find the environment in which you write the best you know and that's not just about where but time wise you know do you work best when you have set aside a few hours are you better when you're snatching things um, take um, I, the two weeks that Anne spent, Anne and I spent together in February and June. We set aside two whole weeks were invaluable in um, not only the the quantity of writing, but quality of our thought and thinking. So, um, what kinds of questions, even if you're not writing with somebody else, who who is that imaginary person in your head that you might be wanting to talk things over with? Um, you know, they've got also got you, Karen, which is fantastic i mean i i would always advise people to go with a team such as such as your team that that, that really help them when they're down um boost their their confidence uh, give them the energy to keep going have that professional framework in every sense uh to to, to make the end product as 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 as, as, as good as possible um and you know as as Anne says you know get your voice out there um, you, you think that maybe everybody said everything, but maybe not in the way that you say it. Maybe your voice is the one that's going to touch other people. So, mm. so you know, there, there's nothing to lose. Get out there. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Anything else you want to add, Anne? I, I, I think we've I think we've really covered much. everything. Okay, so how can people find out more about um, yourselves and also the book, and um, how can they get in touch? Well, first of all, the books on Amazon, the Discovery Prism, um, under our names, and uh, our website www.global-business-leaders.com. Maybe that's something that that you'll put on the screen somewhere. Absolutely. I don't know. I will do. Uh, and 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 there we have a. Um, a section which is just about the discovery prism and the framework but also gives you the opportunity if you sign up to our mailing list to download a chapter for free fabulous that's our offer wonderful thank you very much so anything else you'd like to add ladies just thanks uh, thanks for the opportunity and um, it's been a wonderful collaboration and maybe it's not our first and last book maybe there's another one. Oh, i'm looking forward to hearing more about that <laughs> Uh, and uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically, I'm going to leave the word to Anne. Said that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies. Thanks, thank you, Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.